Hi everyone and welcome to Presentations Just Got Easier. My name is Vanessa DeCuckoo. I am the Global Training Manager here at 2020 and today we're going to be in 2020 Design Live looking at some different um, techniques when it comes to creating presentations. There's five main topics for today. First, we're going to take a look at some preferences that I prefer and we want to set these up ahead of time so that way we save time in our future projects. We'll spend a little bit of time on lighting, very, very um, critical and frequently asked question for rendering. We are gonna look at a few of the different rendering modes, the different rendering effects, and my favorite topic for today is a quick tip to show you how to create a GIF out of 2020 design renderings. So let's jump in. So today I am in 2020 Design Live. Um, I'm actually using version 13.1. Some of the features I'm showing today, you need to be on that version or higher. So you can go up to the help menu and check for updates or go out to the 2020 account to download the latest update. And once you're updated, we'll want to go and take a look at a couple preferences. Now, the first area I'm going to step into is just called rendering. And I just want to mention I today am using the Easy Render rendering engine. It is our fastest rendering engine when you're trying to um, quickly show presentations to your clients. It's got some really nice features because it auto populates lights and things. And we'll get into that in a little bit. I also have another setting that I um, have changed from the default. Usually this is going to be set to small or medium. Um, I have changed it to large, but I will warn you, large means I want to default to using large textures to get the most clarity, but it may take longer for some of your renderings if you're doing them in high quality. So if you are using an older PC or laptop, um, just be careful. If it's really slowing things down, you might want to adjust this to medium or small just to try to help conserve um, some of the power behind the scenes. The other area I'm going to uh, adjust real quickly is the room textures. And this is just a personal preference, but I don't know about you, but every time you do a rendering for the first time, regardless of the client, um, you probably don't always like to use our defaults. Our defaults are gray walls. Um, the floor is actually defaulted to a white tile. You'll notice I already have mine changed to pine pale, just kind of this real subtle wood color. Um, and our ceiling is a floral white, which white sounds fine, but if you go look at it, it's actually kind of a pinky yellow white. So for this example, I'm going to switch that. Let's say I like uh, color number three. It can just be any color that you prefer or that's common in your region, switch that up. And now every time you start a new project, it will open up with the pine floor and a white color number three ceiling. That is, again, a preference that now is consistent on every new project. That way you don't have to go and change it, but you can if the client needs a customization. Now let's take a look at a project that has a few things that are already completed. I actually cannot take credit for this design I'm going to show. It was designed by my friend Maria Steprofeni. Very simple L shape with a, a nice decorative area for some great storage um, and allows us a little bit of extra room to try some things out too today. So we'll look at that in a rendering mode in just a second. But the first thing if you'd like to add some decorative lighting, now when you pull in lighting from the cloud browser, these lights will actually emit light. Another little tip, I like to pull these in in elevation mode um, just so that I can adjust the ceiling height or where it is on the ceiling um, because every project is a little different, maybe has different ceiling heights and not every single light is built uh, with the same elements or properties to them so I can kind of preview them or adjust them a little bit faster from this view. We'll take a look at this space and I believe my last perspective was of the main perimeter wall um, but let's kind of move over to our mock-up of our lighting showroom <laughs> and you can see those three lights which to me the scale is a bit too big but at least I can maybe pick the style of the one that I prefer. Notice you can see the light emitting from them. Great. Now another preference that I really really like is in the render settings there's a setting called keep window on top what that lets you do if this is on is I can continue to maybe make some edits or work in the background so if I decide maybe that light was just too wide this one is too um, I don't know just too different from what I'm looking for I can delete them and it leaves the rendering window on the benefit to that is you're not going to forget about the rendering window in the background and um, use up all your resources without realizing it 
if you leave the rendering windows rendering and you're making changes, it's going to take a lot of the power from your computer. Um, here, now that I've got this item, it's close, but I can still change some of the attributes. So even though it's a cloud light, you don't have to leave it or use it just as is. Let's make it um, maybe about half the size that it came in. I think the scale was just a little big for what I was looking for. So I scaled that down. It's not quite in the spot that I want it, but now it's just a little smaller. Maybe this would make a good pendant light over the sink, for example. So I'm gonna close the rendering window, um, maybe move this back up so it's aligned with the ceiling, and then go back to the floor plan view and move it kind of quickly over. Uh, to our sink area and right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it I, as long as it's sort of in the center. If I pull this back up in a presentation, let's see if we like it as is. Cool. Now, again, that's just a decorative light where um, you may be specifying a lot of the finishing details for a project, but probably the lighting that you may find the most helpful or the one that you probably make the best um, margin on is lighting from companies like Hardware Resources, they're or known as task lighting, or lighting from Sensio. So think of lighting under the wall cabinets or the toe kick area or above the wall cabinets. If you go out to the, your 2020 account, you can actually install both catalogs, either um, Hardware Resources or Sensio, and they have something available called a lighting wizard. So today I have the hardware resources catalog installed, which is known as task lighting. And I'm gonna just use some tape lighting because I've got uh, just a few wall cabinets that it might be nice to have some linear tape light underneath. Now there's a few different styles as you can see, but that's the benefit to using the lighting wizard is it will take you step by step through all of the options that you have available to you. And the really nice thing is you've got these nice visuals that show you um, the color temperature or the Kelvin range so it just makes it really, really easy to specify things correctly where, I don't know, when I was a designer, lighting was very intimidating to me. So I've added some lighting. It's not really easy to tell in this particular floor plan view, um, but you might use some of these other tabs to preview it. You'll notice that I already have my one of my tabs set up to show lighting. This is actually a preference or a scheme that's pre-built right into the software. You just need to change it to 2020 lighting and you can now easily see where the drivers are, are setting in here and where that tape light was factored in. So it does all of the math for you. If you go in and you run any of the reports, it would be ready to order. But of course, this um, example today is all about presentation. So let's take a look at our rendering. Yes, even those tape light examples are going to show in the rendering. So you can really help a client envision like what that little bit of an upcharge is for. It really gives it kind of that finished look where they can see the lighting overall. Now that lighting in easy render is considered user added. So anytime you're ever trying to like really make something stand out, you might kind of dial that up and the others down. This is going to be super dramatic as you can tell, um, but then you can kind of see that lighting a little bit better. Um, you can always come back in here and readjust this or reset this to the default whatever you're most comfortable with. You've got a lot of control of editing that lighting on the fly if you need. Now what's also really exciting is in one of the latest versions of 2020 Design Live is you will you might notice that in addition to having hidden lines and textures, we brought back textures with edges. So I was always a huge fan of this because I felt like my clients could really start to appreciate or understand um, door styles and see, you know, if you've got like a five piece drawer front instead of a slab front, it's just a lot easier to tell than in a straight uh, texture drawing. So you can adjust those pretty quickly. Again, textures with edges was brought back into Easy Render pretty recently. And then finally at the top, you might have noticed that this effects ribbon has grown and you've got a lot of different effects that you can now adjust your rendering um, as needed. So I'll use this a lot with just the texture setting. Textures tends to be one of the best presentation modes that's really easy to show kind of that final rendering, but sometimes a project I want it to look more uh, white or maybe have a little different view. 
the effects tab has some really great settings where you can go in and adjust things like picking the white point allows you to pick one of the brightest whitest spots in the project and it will auto adjust the whole space to that light or picking black point for example if I pick black notice it really tones everything down to that black if you're not liking the way that it turned out you can always come back and reset it it's no problem at all um, sometimes I will use the settings and then come back let's say I go back and pick the black point and if it's a little too dark well you can still adjust the overall brightness um, manually as well or adjust the contrast or take off that contrast because um, each one of these is just a way to add a little more definition throughout each one of your renderings. And one of the last effects on here is called blur. Um, if you have ever studied, studied photography, you might know this as the bokeh effect. Um, this can be really neat on large, large projects. So in this example, I might actually move a little bit and kind of um, start as if I'm walking into this space. And um, you know, the bokeh effect, what it does is it allows you to put something into focus and have everything else kind of a little blurry. It's like a real perspective view. So I might actually turn on the blur, pick my focus point as the thing that's closest to me, like the refrigerator, and notice like the background kind of blurs out. But you can adjust this. You can make it really, really intense, maybe a bit too much, and we can pull that back. You can also change the radius or how big the focus is versus um, how big the rest of that space is. So that works really well on big, big spaces. This is for like super dramatic impact. It's not something that I use every day, but kind of a cool option that we've never had before. So I'm going to come back and reset everything. And I might even go back to my original view here. So I'm using one of my named views. I'm just going back to last view. Now this last um, tool I want to show, I'm actually going to use 2020 design, but I'm also going to use PowerPoint just because um, I want to create something that is a little bit more exciting than just say this standard flat image. Now notice I maximize the screen just so that I can see everything um, a little bit better. I might even um, minimize my ribbon at the top just again so I can see as much of the sp space as possible. Whenever I am rendering in a high quality, I will use the very last option on the dashboard to do a high quality rendering. Now this one can take a couple minutes to final render this whole entire space. So imagine that I've done that. Now, the cool thing that I'm gonna do next is go in and make some changes. Maybe the client has not confirmed what they want to do for that backsplash. So if we do a rendering like this and save it, and we save this image. Now I already have a few saved. I've got four iterations of this. So let's pretend that we save that one. And then I come back into the project and we come in and we save. Now you'll notice a cool trick that Maria did on this project is she drew um, the walls that was going to have a backsplash. She drew them in sections. So that north wall is actually two walls, section one and section two. To do that, you literally just draw as far as you want this first dimension and then draw another section of the wall. So that way um, it's very easy to show that um, wall is a different color, finish, texture, in our case, tile. So if I go back to material, you can see that this was this uh, Elvic Lux Oriental white finish, kind of a marble look uh, finish across here. But over in my user texture library, I have some other cool finishes too, some really funky tiles. So let's go ahead and pick one of these and say, okay. Now, if you're not familiar with, with bringing in your own images, we've got a really nice knowledge base article on this. Um, you can just add your own images if you have a good texture to pull in. But when I say, okay, what that's done is now the next time I render this the space is going to look quite different because now I've got like this uh, real I started with a real traditional texture that matched the countertop and now we've got a really cool contrast texture tile uh, so what I'm going to do is use and go through and render every option that I might want to show off really quickly okay and then save them all in high quality then let me give you a little preview so I open up the folder where I've saved those images and I've got the four different backsplashes. So here's the first backsplash, nice and simple. Everybody expects that. Here's kind of a nice delicate texture. There's my fun, really bold texture. And then here's the one that matched that countertop. So if I have those four images, all I need to do is go in and use a tool like PowerPoint. 
Now I'm going to pull PowerPoint onto the screen and we're actually going to start a PowerPoint from scratch. If you're not super comfortable with PowerPoint, do not worry. The next couple of tools I'm going to show you are super easy. All I have to have are the images that I want to pull together. So I'm going to go insert photo album. When I pull that photo album over, I can browse out to the folder that I have those four images. So backsplash one, two, three, four. I name them super easy so I'd be able to remember them. I'm not changing any of these settings, but one that is really important is that the picture should fit to the slide. So it'll be just as big as possible. I'm actually gonna delete the cover slide that it gives me. I don't need that, but what this did is it just gave me four identical slides, but identical as in the view or the named view, but each backsplash is a little bit different. So I can just go up to file and export and look for the create animated GIF. This is like those images that move um, through a loop. So I can set even the type of preference for the export. I'm gonna choose extra large in case I wanna show this on a large screen. And I also like to make the background transparent. Uh, if you notice, my background was black. That was just the default. I don't need a black background. I don't really want anything in the background. So I can create that GIF. It'll ask me where I wanna save it. And we're just gonna go ahead and save this as back splash um, loop. And it's just saved in the folder that I have all my other images. Here's my backsplash loop. What we just created was a GIF that automatically loops through those four images. So notice how it's just automatically every like second it pulls up a new image. Now I have a couple others to show just for fun, um, depending on how many renderings you want to do. I have an appliance GIF that I created where I actually took an image of the appliances opening. Now that's actually three images. The appliance is closed, the appliance is open about halfway, and the appliance is open pretty much the whole way. And then I also created one, this one took a little bit longer because I had to render it in each color, but a few different color options from that particular catalog. So pretty fun. These are really great for like social media campaigns or anything you're doing in marketing material, or if you just really have like a big presentation that you really wanna wow somebody, um, that could be cool. Would I do this for every client? <laughs> Probably not because it takes a little bit of time, um, but if you have somebody really, really trying to decide between two things or you're trying to show a few different options, just a different way to do it. So I hope that was helpful to see uh, in 2020 Design Live actually rendering a real project and getting results that are really worth presenting. Um, if you ever have any questions in the future, you can reach out to us at any of our social media platforms or on 2020spaces.com. Thanks so much.